at the Berkeley County Health Department all day long, today and today only. When you mention Michael Walton's name, you get a free <laughs> radon test kit, no charge whatsoever, because he's picking up the tab in both locations all day long. Let's say good morning to our co-host, the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, who's up to something. He gave us a glint in his eye when I looked over this morning. I saw something going on. Yeah, I was just thinking about Michael Walton. He's already endeared to the community already and now giving away the free test kit michael how much better can you be how much more can you do for the community saintly (laughs) it's crazy yeah saint michael saint michael yeah picking up the tab you know sometimes this can go into the millions of dollars uh depending on the rush for the free rate on test kits and uh i again just uh, thank you michael this is generous quite welcome and we probably have a call coming in from susan michael's wife said don't do it michael don't Don't do do it it. (laughs) we it's too much money Let's say good morning also to New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Good morning. How are you, sir? Having sponsored the uh, free radon test kits before, I will tell you the hardest part is going house to house and actually setting it up for people. (laughs) That gets to be a burden. Yeah, well, he's got time. Something to look forward to. (laughs) Sure. It's uh, one thing to be generous with your money, another to be generous with your time, because time is so valuable. Exactly. And, Michael, we appreciate yours this morning. Good morning to you. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me, Rob. You're very welcome. Uh, You're in the process now of accepting applications for grants? We are. Well, we've got a a grant program called the Detlev and Mary Ellen Preissler Fund for the Arts, Music, Design, and Nature. Um, And it's a wonderful uh, wonderful program that was established by Detlev Preissler's um, widow, Mary Ellen. Um, And... It will award $150,000 in grants to nonprofit organizations that have a a focus on the arts, um, dance, music, um, design. And then if they can incorporate nature into it, it even uh, brings in more uh, more points for their application. So uh, we've got a request for proposal out right now. Um, We'll accept applications through May 31st. How many awardees will there be? Um, the grants usually range from a thousand to ten thousand um, dollars. Last year, I think we had about um, twenty twenty awardees who received grants from that program. Um, and it's really nice for us to be able to offer this because it's the only field of interest grant program that we have that um, uh, addresses the arts. Many of the programs that we are able to fund are youth and education, health care, human welfare, that type of thing. This is specifically um, for the arts and, and nature. So it's a, a real exciting program to be able to uh, to offer. It's the second year that um, Mrs. Preissler has done this. She's uh, provided us with a, an endowed fund, but also this is a pass-through uh, source of funding that goes directly into the community. Um, we did a, uh, just under 100, 150000 last year, and we'll do 150000 again this year. Michael, uh, arts cover a very broad spectrum. Does it include authors? Um, it, <laughs> if they're nonprofit authors, yes, it does. No, um, all the of vast the, majority of authors are nonprofit. nonprofit yeah. This one's hurting. This one's hurting. He's been picking up a lot of costs on radon test kits. That's right. Now, um, it, what we are doing is funding uh, nonprofit organizations. So it's not specifically yeah. artists, sure. um, but it is groups that. Um, can, can you work. give me examples? I can. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that I like to talk about is the. Um, Black Cat Music Cooperative in um, Berkeley Springs. So this is a group that has been in uh, in existence for about seven years, I believe. And they work not only with children, but also with adults. They've got a, a wonderful program where they have performances by their different groups that they teach and, and work with. Um, and actually on Sun, was it Sun, yeah, Saturday afternoon, um, their Young Ukes uh, group performed at the Ice House in Berkeley mm-hmm. Springs. And this is a group of about a dozen young uh, ladies and, and one young man, um, a, a, ages 10 to 17, who um, play not only ukuleles, but also um, cellos and violins and guitars. Mm-hmm and sing and they put on a an, an amazing performance and these kids have been 
rehearsing throughout the pandemic. Um, Black Hat has an outdoor space where they can rehearse. Um, they have uh, access to musical instruments and they work with the schools. Um, they do all kinds of interesting programming. And then it gives the, uh, the, the children and, and the adults an opportunity to perform in front of an audience. So um, that's just one of the things uh, that we really like to be able to support one kind of program. You mentioned schools, and I know you've just recently gone through a lot of scholarship, reviewing scholarships. Yeah. Bonnie was on mm -hmm. one of the several committees. Uh, how many scholarships did you hand out? Well, we haven't uh, awarded the scholarships okay. yet. The, the decision uh, has been made by the um, scholarship committee. It has to be approved by the board. We have a special board meeting on May 11th for the approval, and then the scholarships will be awarded. But we'll have about $160,000 in scholarships that will be awarded. Probably 90 students will get scholarships. They're, they're fairly small scholarships, usually between 500 and and uh, $2,000. We have a couple that are substantially larger. Um, $5,000 a year is the one that we've talked about before that was set up by Colonel Dennis D. Barron um, for the Civil Air Patrol. And we have three of those that are going to be awarded this year. Now, the scholarships to a, uh, a college, university, uh, technical uh, school. Technical schools, yeah. Yep. Yep. We have a lot of different types of scholarships. Mm -hmm. There are 44 different um, scholarship programs that are administered by the um, Community Foundation. And all of those uh, have their own uh, their own guidelines, basically. Some of them are for specific uh, high schools, students that are graduating from Musselman or Martinsburg or Hedgesville. Um, others are for um, specific universities. We have several that are for WVU-bound students. In total, how many applied? Can you, do you remember? Oh, boy. Um, a lot. I, I wish Karen remember. was yeah. here because she could uh, tell us, but it was probably, I think we had a hundred and... 180 or 190 so. applications and she may be uh, answering that question right now on Facebook for you Rob I'm not I'm, sure I'm searching, I'm searching. <laughs> she may, she's, one, she's a little slow on the trigger finger 194 194 <laughs> is that right yeah <laughs> okay I had a feeling she might be listening there it is 194 <laughs> yeah so I was, guys, I was close I'll verify yeah you pretty were close going back to the arts what are the milestones for people who are applying for one of these these grants do they have to show that they're helping the community with this, or is it could it be a writer, a writer in residence, an <laughs> yeah. artist in residence kind of program for a private school? What is the there are no specific guidelines. It's not like you have to do a certain type of program, but um, virtually all of the programs are, are youth-oriented um, that apply. Um, you can apply for general support. Um, which is unusual because most grants are uh, program or project What does based. that mean, general support? We need to turn the lights on every ah. day. And um, we've got to pay our electric bill and our um, Internet, and it's going to cost us a total of $5,000 a year to keep operating. And so they can apply for that. If, uh, if organizations are applying for general support, we ask that they be very specific in why they need the general support, um, not just like, we need $10,000. Um, tell us exactly uh, why it is that you need that additional help. And is that how it works? Do people apply saying, I need, this is the amount I need? Yep. Or, okay. Yeah. So we'll and get. Then a, is it a yes or no, or is it well? We can't do ten, but we'll give you eight. Um, you know, and it depends on the program. We have uh, our our youth and education grants. We do um, come back with a lower number if we have so many applications that we can't fund them all. Um, we normally will say the ones that are uh, is super impressive we will fully fund. The ones that we really think are good but we just don't have enough money we'll partially fund and then there are some that we don't fund at all. Um, other programs like our mini grants to teachers program if you ask for $486 and it's funded you get $486. Michael I'm I'm overwhelmed with a number of different grants different categories you have through the year. Uh, I know there's some, uh, some of the committees uh, review in the summer and now you're doing the review in the, uh, in the spring. In total, 
how many categories do you find? It's so funny that you ask that because this morning I was writing down uh, on my little list of things to accomplish this week. We need to um, really put together the final uh, push for the, the summer, fall grant categories because we want to just make sure that we get all of the everything slotted in uh, rebecca knight who is our grants manager does a great job of keeping track of all of that but i don't like to overwhelm her with too many programs at one time so we'll have the berkeley county industrial park development fund grants come up in the summer we'll have the two rivers giving circle grants in the fall We've got our mini grants to teachers program that'll be in September and our youth and education grants program, which will be in October. Um, and then the, the winter spring grants program, which are the healthcare, human welfare are in the early part of the year. And then we have the Preisler grant. So I don't know, what is that like seven different? Seven different categories, yeah. yeah. Seven different. Now I'm sure it's clear to you and Penny Porter, but what's the difference between the United Way given money and the foundation given money? Well, there's a couple of major differences. One is um, the United Way is there to address immediate needs with the funds that they raise every year. Um, we are addressing long-term needs with the funds that we receive from donors who want to establish endowed funds. So we invest what we are given and then we make small distributions from those funds every year. So um, we're I, I think both organizations are doing a, a, about a million dollars in grants and uh, we do scholarships as well but um, that's one of the big the big differences is everything that United Way raises in a year goes right back out into the community we work off of the endowed um, the, the assets that we have endowed and the gains from those investments could you give a I'm sorry John Just say, what's the difference between a grant and a scholarship well, a scholarship goes to a university. Um, it's for a specific individual. So um, a student will apply for a scholarship, and if they get it, we send a check to the university. Grants go to nonprofit organizations for their projects and programs. Okay. With limited strings attached, is that correct? For the grants? For the grants. It depends. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are times where we'll get a grant, and they have to do a specific thing. We'll award a grant, and it's for a specific purpose, okay. and they have to show that they've accomplished that in order to get the funding. Um, especially if we we work with almost exclusively 501c3 nonprofit organizations, but sometimes we'll work with a civic organization, um, and if that's the case, they have to provide us with uh, the verification that what they applied for the grant for was a charitable purpose and that it had been accomplished. And you're working with the Boy Scouts to uh, litter abatement. Yep, uh, yeah, that's yeah, one of the groups yeah, that we yeah, work with, yeah. actually through Berkeley Community Pride. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, the history of the foundation I found to be very intriguing. Could you very quickly review the history? Yeah, absolutely. It established in 1995 um, by a group of citizens in the Eastern Panhandle, originally serving Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan, and then about 10 years later expanding to Hampshire and Hardy with the affiliates there. Um, the first donor was a gentleman named George Hancock who gave the Community Foundation $100,000 as a scholarship in memory of his wife who had been a Martinsburg native and Hollywood's Hancock was a kindergarten teacher and uh, this scholarship awards three $1,500 scholarships each year um, to African-American students who are uh, heading off to college. So it's, a, it's the first scholarship we had, the first gift for, to the Community mm -hmm. Foundation. And our first president, um, Doug Roach, was a, a great uh, inspiration to, to me and to so many people in the community. He led the um, foundation for six years as president, and then Tia McMillan became president mm -hmm. for three years. And it's just been um, great people from the community who are um, the, the chairing the board of directors. And actually, Tia's um, son, Andrew McMillan, is our current president. And Doug's son, Scott, had been. Yep, Scott, well. Scott was yeah. president. Yeah. And we've yeah. had some wonderful um, yeah. leaders over yeah. the last mm -hmm. 27 years. So, What year did you take over, Michael? Um, 2012. 12, okay. I had uh, I, uh, followed Amy Owen, who right. was just a great, um, yeah. great leader for the foundation, the first executive. And what were the assets when you took over, and what are they now? 
roughly? I think they were. Um, it, it was up and down because um, we had just gotten the gift from Randy Smith. Yeah. And so we were in the process of uh, building the uh, Randy Smith Rec Center down in South Berkeley. So mm -hmm. there were million dollars flowing here and there, but I think it was around $11 million when, when um, I took over in 2012. And um, if you'd asked me a year ago, we were at $40 million. We went down to about $36 million, um, with the losses in 2022. Mm -hmm. But that's not unexpected. We'd had a couple of really strong years sure. with investment mm -hmm. returns and double digits. Do you shift with interest rates increasing? Do some of the investments shift to more cash-related products that are paying more interest? Well, we've always uh, had about a 65% equity, 35% fixed income mix. Uh, the the fixed income has been underperforming for years and years and now um, certainly we are able to get four and a half five percent from a, a, a cd or a, mm -hmm. a money market fund so that has helped with the fixed income part of it and actually our investments are up for the quarter uh just about five percent uh, for the first quarter so that's a encouraging sign and when you uh, distribute funds you're distributing on a rolling average that goes back three years uh five years 20 five years. Uh, 20 quarters so we it it, it uh, ha helps to level out the peaks and valleys of the investment markets by mm -hmm. doing it that way and we distributed four and a half percent or we are distributing four and a half percent this year we've already awarded close to it's got to be four hundred thousand dollars in grants um already this year just with the youth and education i'm sorry with the winter spring grants program and randy smith has recommended almost a hundred thousand dollars in grants um so far this year just to uh, support great programs that either he's found out about or i've brought to him um and it's it's wonderful to work with him because he's uh, open to ideas and and always looking for ways to support the community years ago at another radio station, mm -hmm. I used to interview this fellow who was uh, a national scholarship person. He, he didn't fund them, he researched them, and he made mention of this website where he was working on where you could find all these scholarships, or this, maybe it was a book at the time. But there, he said there were scholarships literally for left-handed third basemen, uh, you know, red-haired ukulele players. You could find any scholarship anywhere as niche driven as you possibly could with the right amount of research do you have some fairly unique scholarships not necessarily redheaded ukulele players but no that's one of the things when somebody establishes a scholarship with the community foundation we want it to be broad enough so mm -hmm. that it appeals to a larger number of people it can't be um so narrowly focused i, I mean i think maybe one of the more narrow focused ones would be the um the one that Colonel Barron set up for Civil Air Patrol, because you've got to be a cadet, uh, a leader in the cadet program of Civil Air Patrol. We have one that uh, John Wharton established uh, that is for uh, Musselman students in the top 10 percent of their class. That's about as specific as it, sometimes it's uh, athletes, um, but most of the time it's academic and, mm -hmm. and uh, their their community activities that are weighed heavily in the application process. What are your deadlines for applying? Um, usually the scholarship application is late February, early March. Um, I think we were March 2nd or 3rd this year. Um, and it goes online live in early November, so there's plenty of time for students to apply for scholarships. You recently added a person to the staff. We did. Um, we're excited to have Susan Caperton as our associate director. Um, Susan uh, has a law degree, um, has been the president of CASA for a number of years, um, was one of the founders of the uh, backpack program in Morgan County, uh, ran Morgan County Partnership in the early days, uh, has been doing a lot of volunteer work uh, while her three daughters uh, attended high school and now they're either graduated from college or in their final years of college and so we snatched her up and are th thrilled to have her as part of the team you folks i was reading in the press release how the, the timeline has gone in terms of adding staff you do that rather judiciously 
We do. We've been, <laughs> we're very lean. We're not one of those organizations that is trying to grow um, a staff and then figure out how to pay it. We want to make sure that we have the resources available. Um, I, we've been very conservative over the years and continue to be conservative, but we do um, have a great team now. I mentioned Rebecca Knight as our, um, she, she started out as our office manager, administrative assistant, and um, it was just so clear that she was multi-talented. We gave her the grants program. She writes all of our press releases and mm -hmm. does a great job with that and is uh, very good with the finances as well. So uh, she's super. Uh, we, we have um, uh, Karen Hammond Dunn, who is our uh, program manager for scholarships. And what we did when we realized that we had a number of really large scholarships um, that were paying uh, substantial admin fees. Uh, the admin fee for scholarship is 2% um, that comes to the community foundation because they are a lot more complex than the other um, funds. The other funds are 1%. The, uh, we, we realized that we needed Karen to focus exclusively on scholarships and education, and so she's done a, a splendid job with that. And then um, Amy Pancake is our affiliate director, and she works with the um, uh, volunteer boards over in Hampshire and Hardy County and does all of the work for us over there. So, Michael, if my math's right, you've uh, uh, gained about $30 million over a period of about 10 years. Uh, how do you encourage or how much encouragement does it take to have a, a, more additional people to invest in the foundation well what happens uh, a lot of times it's the professional advisors the um, f financial planners the uh, trust attorneys um, who will bring clients to us um, really that the one of the biggest resources is um, the trust uh, offices at the banks that we work with. We have investments at seven local banks and the trust officers will often call and say, I've got somebody who'd like to meet you and um, may want to set up a fund. Uh, may not fund it now, but in an estate plan. So we received over $2 million in gifts last year and the majority of those were um, from the estates. Bill, you have a fund for uh, picking up litter through the foundation, do you not? We do have, yes. I uh, started a few years ago, and that's the one uh, Michael referred to earlier with the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, and the it was set up, it was designated for county beautification, roadside litter, uh, and uh, and it took the five years of, uh, of growth as well. And so, so now the money has been distributed to Berkeley Community Pride. And we've worked with the Boy Scouts, but we're looking to work with other organizations as well. Uh, there's a, and the, the idea is that we pick up a road frequently enough, we change the mindset. Uh, most of the other uh, litter pickups, you pick it up one time, you may do it again six months later. We're trying to do it a, a few number of roads on a bi-weekly basis. Hopefully, it will change the mindset of uh, throwing trash out the window. And we're seeing last year was the first year we were doing it, and there's some indication that we're seeing the roads that the Boy Scouts are picking up are um, are showing improvement. Making a difference. Yeah, but we're a little careful with the Boy Scouts. We, <clears throat> we first and foremost, we've got to ensure security. Uh, so every road, we will not ask the youth to go out and pick up. We go, we ask them to go on roads that we feel to be fairly yeah, safe. Yeah, a lot of two-lane yeah. roads without shoulders. Around. Exactly right, right. yeah. Uh, Michael, about a minute left. If someone is, uh, maybe they heard what you were talking about today and they'd like to start a fund or find out more about it, how do they do that? Well, they can certainly go online to www.ewvcf.org, the initials of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, or call us at 304-264-0353. Um, they can subscribe to our newsletter or um, follow us on Facebook. And how much does it take to initially start a fund? depends on the type of fund. Um, we have unrestricted or um, field of interest funds that are $5,000 uh, endowed, and then a donor-advised fund is 10000 agency or designated fund is 10000 and scholarship funds are 20000 
Are all these funds in perpetuity, or are some of them scheduled to sunset at a certain date? They are all established as a permanent endowment. Um, they can be spent down to a certain level um, in some cases. But most of them, what we encourage donors to do is to work with us if they want to have a lasting legacy um, that will fund programs and projects that are dear to them um, in perpetuity. If I can add one more. Uh, Elaine, I couldn't stop you if I tried. Uh, no, that's right. Yeah, uh, one of the nurses that worked for hospice was killed a couple so years ago with automobile accident. Mm -hmm. So the board of hospice uh, and the staff at hospice wanted to set up a fund in memory of this, this particular nurse. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Michael, thank you very much for coming in today. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Rob. Pleasure is ours. John, Bill, Michael, good to see you. Michael, great to see you. Say hi to Susan. I will. Okay.